Okay, in this video we're going to be designing the side pods. So we're going to go once again through the motions of getting a file off of Google Classroom, downloading it, and then opening it in SketchUp for web. So I'm going to return back to Google Classroom. Here's my SketchUp for web and F1 drawing templates. This time I'm going to open up the side pod. You're going to be prompted to download, which I'm going to select download. I'm using Chrome, so keep that in mind. This is how Chrome is working. When the file downloads, remember, do not open the file, okay? Keep it here. You wanna return back to SketchUp for web and use the folder option, which is the open feature and save feature and insert feature. In this case, we're gonna use the open feature. Now, keep in mind, we have to bring it into SketchUp for web and then from there, we're gonna actually put it in our folder, okay? So I'm gonna first add a model. Now I need to go to that download area. Um, my computer automatically goes to downloads. Yours more than likely may as well, but make sure you navigate to the folder that where you're downloading these, this information. In my case on a PC, using Windows 10 and using Chrome, it's going right into downloads. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up this side pod template that I just downloaded. Now, when we do bring this into SketchUp for web, once again, there's a, a few steps here before we can actually get started. Um, I need to now double click on it. It's my side one F1 template, and then I'm going to save as, okay? And the reason behind this is I wanna keep all of my files that I've then created, completed in a separate folder from the ones that are for the most part blank. So I'm going to go to this SketchUp folder and keep in mind I'm using what's called Trimble Connect. So this is all kind of cloud-based. So even this folder that I'm going to be saving into is not on my computer. It's actually on what we call the cloud. So I can grab this information uh, from any PC, which is the beauty of using a cloud-based program. So I'm going to go to this F1 car folder. We created that earlier in one of our prior videos. And here I'm simply going to type in side pod okay and I'm gonna go ahead and hit save now the reason it's asking me to overwrite I've, I've been practicing a lot using SketchUp so you're gonna type in side pod you're gonna see the feature to save it and the reason it's asking me to overwrite it is I've created this one before I'm just gonna replace the old now with a new file so here we are we're get re getting ready to get started um, I want to first start off by saying that in my previous videos of airfoils, I kind of drew a workspace, which for this part has its own specifications. A side pod by specs needs to be a minimum of 50 millimeters in length, and it needs to have a minimum height of 10 millimeters. So I'm gonna zoom in here so we can really see what's happening. Um, I've created, once again, this workspace. Some students are gonna find they don't need it or they don't want it and they just wanna delete it. I'm okay with that, but keep in mind that when you draw your workspace, um, it must be at least this large, if not larger, but if you wanna delete these lines, meaning, watch this, if you wanna get rid of these things that I've already drawn for you, you are more than welcome to do that if they're just becoming a bit of an eyesore. Now, what you don't want to get rid of is this line here. This line represents the axle line, which these wheel wells and these wheels need to kind of be left on. So do not delete this line here. Uh, but if you want to get rid of all this other geometry that I've created for you in the template, please do so. You can do that with just about any template I have uh, for the parts, okay? So here's what we would have discussed in Collaborate. Um, I'm gonna first draw a simple side pod, and then I'm gonna talk a little bit about elevated side pods, okay? So I've told you in Collaborate that when you are ready to draw your side pod, like an airfoil, you need to have first measured your limits, okay? So I'm gonna first click on the rectangle tool, and I'm actually gonna click once at the origin, left click, release the mouse. Remember, let go of the mouse button, move in this direction, kind of up and over diagonally. Now I want you to pay close attention to what's happening happening here in the bottom of the workspace, okay? You're gonna notice that this is starting to increase both the first and second number. First number is the length of this object. 
The second number that changes is the height. According to my paper, my side pod has an overall length of 65 and an overall height of 15, 65 and 15. So when I first clicked here and released the mouse button, I just move, I don't have to move far. I first type in the length of the object, 65, comma, in my case, 15. Okay, you don't click in that square, you just start typing, hit enter, and you now have a workspace of 65 by 15. In my case, you would type in your workspace. Okay, we're all doing something a little different. Now, I'm gonna hit M for move. I wanna temporarily just move this wheel well and wheel over here, just to make a point. Now, if you are drawing a side pod where the bottom of your side pod is also located along the bottom of your car body, you could start drawing. I have a few students where their side pods are what we call elevated. Elevated. Watch what you would have to do next. Please watch carefully. If your side pod is kind of floating above the bottom of your car, you're gonna click on this arrow tool. You would have first drawn your workspace. And I want you to click and drag and put a big box around this workspace you created. Click and drag. And you'll notice that all four sides of this rectangle get selected. I'm now gonna hit M for move. And here's what you're gonna do. I'm gonna zoom in really close to the origin. You need to do this before you start drawing, especially you elevated side pods. You're gonna click once at this bottom left-hand corner, that's where the origin is, click once, and you're gonna move the side pod up in terms of where it is located in relation to the bottom of your car body. Now, I want you to look down here in the bottom right-hand corner. So you might wanna do it like so. You may wanna ask yourself, this bottom left-hand corner, this bottom left-hand part of your side pod, Roughly, where is that located in relation to the bottom of your car? Is it five millimeters above the bottom? Six, seven, two, three. Let's just say it's four millimeters above the bottom of the car. I'm gonna type in four, I'm gonna hit enter. And what I just did is I just moved the part, I'm gonna zoom out, and this part now is floating four millimeters above what I'm calling the bottom of the car body or block. This is an important step so that when you move to this next step, like in my last video, please watch, you're gonna be moving your wheel wells. I'm gonna make sure that they're selected first. Hit M for move. And you can grab the wheel well from the center. You can grab it like this if you want. Um, but we gotta keep in mind, we gotta look down here. I'm gonna kinda of zoom in really, really close here. We gotta keep in mind that no part of that wheel well can go necessarily um, beyond too far into the part. So I'm going to kind of click here. Okay, I'm going to zoom out. And I'm going to come over to this wheel well. Let me select it. Hit M for move. Once again, I'm going to grab the wheel well. I'm going to slide it over. And remember, I've got to keep that little plus symbol on this axle line. I'm going to come in a little bit closer. And I can probably bump this over just a little bit more, right about there, okay? You need to start by setting up the location of your workspace before you start then drawing your part. So I want those people with floating, floating side pods, and you'll know what I mean from my collaborate session to have done that. Now, I'm gonna go back a few steps. I'm gonna hit Control Z, and I'm just gonna back up to a typical side pod where your side pod lines up at the bottom of the car. So. Knowing what you now know, you floating side pod students, set that up first, but then you can kind of follow along with me with these next steps. Um, for the majority of my students who are making side pods that kind of align with the bottom of the car body, watch. I first created my workspace. I'm now gonna click on each one of my wheel slash wheel wells. I'm gonna grab the move tool, which is also M for move. And I can move this over along the axle line. The question, once again, is where do you stop? Okay, so I'm gonna drop it right about here. But what I want you to do is I want you to zoom in, and I'm gonna align this point here right there. Boom, okay? Just bear with me here. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with the front wheel well. I'm gonna click on it. I'm gonna select the Move tool. Remember, you can grab it from the center if you like. Do not move it above or below the axle line, just move it directly, in this case, to the left. 
And now I'm gonna zoom in really, really close. And remember, this edge here, this little corner should align here, meaning it should not go further in, or you're actually gonna have a part that's gonna to be touching the wheel. So I'm gonna stop right about there. Okay, remember, you floating, wheel, uh, floating side pod students. It's gonna look different from this, but you're basically gonna be following kind of the same steps to kind of make your part, okay? Now, here's where the magic happens. I'm gonna go ahead and click on my arc tool, and I specifically like to use two point arc, and here's why. I'd use this with my last video. Um, I can click once where the arc starts, left click, and I release the mouse. You then click where the arc ends, which is in this case, I'm gonna zoom in. It's gonna be right where this wheel well kind of intersects with my workspace, click. And my third click, this is a very important click, you have to kind of have your arc conform to the shape of that wheel well. So I'm gonna to try to make sure it's as close as possible. You can see I'm kind of moving up and down that wheel well edge until I can see that my arc matches it almost perfectly. And I'm gonna tell you right now, it's probably gonna be right about, right about there. That looks pretty good, I'm gonna click. Okay, now it's gonna make a little bit more sense when you see me erase. Let me get rid of some of this geometry and get rid of that and get rid of that. Um, I may or may not, nope, let me hit Control-Z, that's always an important thing, I'm gonna stop right there. So what I was able to do is able to make my part conform to the wheel well, meaning if I now take my wheel well wheel and just move it away, you can now see that is the perfect, perfect outline of a wheel well, okay? Let me come over here to the front part of this side pod. And I've had students not use art, it's okay. I've had kids draw things like this. Um, they might start here, and we might get to zoom in really close to make sure you're getting that precise point. Sometimes you'll see the word intersection appear. But I've had kids, you know, do some pretty creative stuff where they're still staying outside. I mean, they're not drawing into the wheel well. They're still staying outside. I've seen things kind of like, things kind of like this. Sure. I've seen things like that. Um, I've seen some students that simply draw maybe something that might look like this. Okay. Just giving you some ideas. It's, it's up to you. The thing we did stress in some of our previous videos and lectures is that we're not making the gap too large between the edge of your part and the wheel. Remember, this gold area represents the gap, that three millimeter minimum gap. So I'm gonna kind of do something I know a lot of students do. They tend to make this arc conform to the same shape as the wheel well. So I'm just gonna kind of do something which I, I believe most kids do just to kind of continue using that same technique. Now remember, it can't be inside. Okay, you can have it go further in, in this direction if you want, but I'm gonna have it align. So I kind of move it up and down until I find that my arc aligns pretty darn well with the arc of the wheel well and click, okay? So to make this one maybe stand out a little bit more, let me click here. Let me click on move. Let me go ahead and grab this. Let me move it out of the way. So you can kind of see now there's the, the, the part I'm gonna get rid of. So it's a racer tool. Don't click inside the white space, nothing happens. I can click here all day, look, nothing happens. You have to click on the edge of that geometry and anything else that's associated with it, get rid of it, okay? That looks pretty good. Uh, once again, I can always put my wheel wells back in place and I'm gonna tell you something in, in, the, in the, one of the other videos. You know, I'm not expecting this to be perfect because you're gonna find later, later these parts can still be adjusted to fit just nicely. Now. I'm gonna wrap this up with um, a few other steps here. Let's just say I wanna do something like this. I wanna come up, I'm just gonna draw something kind of random. Um, and I'm gonna get rid of maybe this bottom section. Sure, that's fine. Um, and then I'm maybe gonna draw something like a curve like this. Oops, sometimes I forget with a two point curve, you first click your start point then you click your end point, and then you find kind of this tangent point, okay? I'm gonna make something that's not legal. I'm gonna make a point by making it look like this. Watch this, I'm gonna either delete these lines here, I could get rid of these to make a point, or I'll just leave them, hit Control Z. Here's the point I wanna make. The last spec here is the thickness or height of the part, in this case the side pod, at its thinnest. This should be at least 10. Now watch this, I can use what's called the tape measure tool. I'm gonna click once, and I'm just gonna move vertically. I'm not gonna click, I'm just gonna stop right here. And if you gotta look at this bottom right-hand corner, you can clearly see it says like squiggly line six, which means this is almost six millimeters. That is not legal. So here's what I like to do. I will actually use the tape measure to put a reference point. Okay, let me back up a step, I'm gonna hit escape. 
I'm going to put a mark at 10, meaning I like the bottom, but I'm going to change this curve. It's going in too sharp. I'm going to click once here. I'm going to move up. And as long as I'm moving in the direction I want to put my tape measure, I'm going to type in the number 10. I'm going to hit enter. Now it could be at least 10, but no, uh, excuse me, no less than 10, but at least 10 or more. You can clearly see the arc should have come in more here. So here's what I do. I just erase the original arc, simple. And I'm going to go ahead and draw a new arc. And I now have kind of a guide. Okay, watch this. I'm going to use a two point arc. Click once to start, click your end point, and then I'm going to drop. Now this arc is definitely a lot, uh, not as deep, but it's now legal. That's the important part. It's now legal. And once again, I can use the tape measure tool. And I've already put a tape measure mark there, but from here to here is clearly 10 millimeters. So when we're drawing pieces and parts. Let's just be very careful that we're meeting specifications. And once again, I can go ahead and get rid of this. I can now get rid of this. Sometimes students will even get rid of any other reference marks they made. But remember, this is your axle line. I like to keep it there. I like to keep it in place for um, possibly for future reference. So this one is done. I'm going to hit save. And in our next video, we're going to be drawing the car body. Yeah.